Hello, welcome back. Last time I did histogram viewer, and that went super well, so I went confidently on to signal window filter and then spent like an hour there to get a suboptimal solution that I thought was cool, but doesn't look too great on the statistics. Anyway, so signal divider is next. Yeah, so as I said, after having done signal multiplier, I did some thinking about how division would work, and I, I have in my mind um, an idea of how I would divide in this language if I need to. Should not be a problem. What do you have to say, Randy? To perceive is to take in. The pattern of light becomes the pattern on your retina becomes something in your brain. Seeing something takes it inside of you. Uh, okay, sure, you can think of it that way if you want. Read values from A and B. Divide A by B. Write the quotient to Q and write the remainder to R. O. Okay, I can do that. Um... Yes. Oh. And now I understand how I would also calculate remainder. Okay. So I have in my mind a way to do this. I don't need these stacks at all. Those are totally unnecessary, I think. Uh, I'm not certain. Okay, so that's a slight complication. All right. Uh, so the idea that I have is that... Um, Okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, so it's A divided by B. In your sample data, A is always the larger number. And that makes sense since this is truncating integer division. I mean, <laughs> technically it's not specified, but I will implement it as truncating integer division. Um, then... Uh, if B were the larger number, you would always just get zero. And A is the output for R. Yeah, zero for Q and, okay, got it. Um, all right. So yeah, you want 15 mm -hmm, and two, of course. Okay, I see. I had never, hmm. This is giving me a new um, new way to think of what a remainder actually is, because I hadn't hadn't had to do this operation in this specific way to frame it this way. Uh, like I had a different, just a different understanding of like what remainder meant in my head. Um, okay. Anyway, so uh, how do I start? Move things around. Uh, don't have to transpose values because a appears to always be the larger one. Uh, I can't assume that though, but that's that's fine. It's a divided by b, so it'll be. I, I don't want to transpose because it's a specific. It is um, uh, non-commutative. I think is the term for that. Anyway, so um, what I want to do is subtract b from a and count the number of times that I can continue doing that until I hit zero. That count goes to q. And whatever is left in my, uh, what I've been subtracting from goes to R. Okay. So, um, where will I want to do that? Well, let's start right here. Um, if I can just do everything in these two nodes, then why involve the others? Uh, so, and I don't know why I would want this other than, oh, hang on, this can be convenient, just like temporary storage so that I don't have to like implement any of these as extra, um, extra registers. So let's go ahead and do that. Sure. Um, so I want to, oh, now I'm thinking of different things. Hmm. Uh, anyway, so you're going to have that value. That's what you'll be sub subtracting from. Um, so for uh, the number of... Oh boy, how will I do this? Um, no, not sub one. Um, so this is wrong, but it will help me think of what I need to think of. Well, I can just assume that'll be a loop, of course. Subright. Um, uh, actually,
actually know. So something like that. So if there is still more to subtract, then keep on subtracting. But I want to, um, I want to actually add it again. So I'll read that value one additional time, right? Um, so yeah, subtracting three from 47 15 times will end up with two and that's what's supposed to be written out to here. But it's greater than zero, so I'm gonna subtract it a 16th time and end up with something zero or less. And then to um, reconstitute that number, then I need to add it once more. And then th what's in ACK right now, will need to go to the right. Um, however, well, no, I can make this work. That's fine, that's very doable. Uh, that's totally fine. Um, so hang on. If this is implemented cleverly enough, then is this... Um, right, so I'm not saving the... So that'll save it to back. And that'll reset it before looping. So, okay. So read the, um, which one is which? This is the dividend, this is the divisor. I think that's right. Um, even basic arithmetic is full of lots of terms that are easy to confuse. Uh, my way of learning arithmetic was very non-traditional, which again is why like I had a different mental model for like what remainder meant than what is made obvious from this implementation here. Uh, so I've just made a new connection. This has caused me lots of problems in life. <laughs> I've made attempts to learn math properly and um, they haven't gone much of anywhere, but I have my own way of doing it that works for most things, uh, but not for everything. Anyway, so this is by using like these terms and having to remember like what these are called. Um, that's putting me in a different mindset than what I normally think of when I'm, when I'm doing anything mathematical. Anyway, uh, shouldn't be a problem here. Anyway, so uh, MAC is zero, AC is the dividend. Um, so this needs to be clever enough to send this value the number of times equal to... Oh, you won't know how many times to send it. So I'm going to have to signal, maybe? Hmm. Uh, you need to just keep sending it until told to stop. Which means I need to send a signal every single time I want to read it, huh? How annoying. All right, well... While I let this process in the back of my mind, let's implement that. Something like that, um, and then finish will actually no wait. Yeah, so finish finish can just restart from there. Like this is this is fine. This is silly, but it's fine. Um, so then that just now hold on. No no no. This that needs to ferry that down to here. Mm -hmm. Because this, right, you're the one who does all the calculations. You're the helper who hangs onto a value and keeps on writing it until um, something or other. Uh, so I send zero or less to retrieve the value and one or more 
to uh, tell it that I'm done with what it's doing and it can go on with its business. Read another value from there and stuff. Okay, uh, so I put these here and here because um, I anticipated maybe wanting to use these. I have not actually had a desire to use them yet. I mean, here and here is just as good as here and here. Um, or here and here, because like these aren't really doing anything. Anyway, um, so what is currently missing here? Signaling. Um, so I just need to move a, sure. That's my signal for um, give me your value. And then, well, I have to do it again there. All right, so I need no more instruction space. Um, can you fit if I do this? How about if I do this? There, uh, close enough. I could have shortened this too, but that's that's fine. Um, let's make this distinct. Why not? So that I can tell which one it's doing. All right, add right. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Just picking kind of random numbers um, that will look distinctive when I do this. All right, so. I tell you to reset your thing. Um, then I move this over here so that it can go there. Swap, move that down, reset. Okay, that sounds plausible, right? It's going to take its time, sure. Ah, uh, that will get one too many, of course, because I do do the extra thing and I add one every time. So I just need to... Um, Let this thing do it and take some burden off that. It doesn't need to do the extra step. All right, so you will report a number that's one too high and you will correct it while you go on with your job. Okay, cool. Hmm, something's wrong. Is it the ones that end up with zero remainder? It looked like that. Yeah, so the zeros got the wrong value for both of those. So instead of that, what I actually want, so if it's equal to zero, I have a problem. So I went to JLZ. Um, oh, well, that's annoying. I don't have JGEZ. Like there's no greater than or equal. I just have to jump to a different place if it's less. So I want to... Um, Hmm, I don't like that, because that means I have to use another instruction here, and I'm out of space. There's only one label, so I can't just compact that, so I do have to actually delete an instruction if I want that to happen. There is no greater than or equal to zero, right? Like, it's just greater or less or equal or not. But it doesn't have the other two. Um, that's Randy's letter. What am I looking for? These are ports. Those are registers. Where are my jumps? Jump unconditionally, equal to zero, not equal to zero, greater than zero, less than zero. Okay. So if I want, um, that's not the right thing to click. <laughs> They're both circular. <laughs> so, all right. So how do I do greater than or equal to? I mean, well, I change this to less than and jump to another thing. But, but the problem is that means I need another label and another instruction, right? Because if I'm jumping less than zero somewhere ahead, then I still need a jump to loop to go back here. How annoying. Okay, so I need to save an instruction here somehow. Is there something I can do, like with my reset here? Or do I just need to do less signaling? All right, so let's think about this. Where can I save one instruction? Anywhere in here. I do need both of these swaps because I need to add one to back. This needs to change. I need to signal then read that value, then signal again. Yeah, so three lines of this are dedicated to signaling to this. 
It'd be nice if one of them could not be, but um, I don't think I get that luxury. And all the, I have seen that all the rest of this works. So the logic is correct, other than this just needing to also do on equal to zero, do that. Is there something unnecessary here or something I can like shortcut? How can I do that? Um, I mean, yeah, save it, saving instructions in here will not help. Uh, I'm not seeing an obvious place to trim anything. Can I have like, can I move something elsewhere in the pipeline? No, I mean, this all has to do with your own registers. Like you are operating on yourself and also signaling. Like, I don't know how many times you want to send your value until I've already done the division. Like, that's that's this value that comes down here, a plus one number of times. Like, you just have to keep doing it until told to stop. And if you are blocked on output, having this wait for input, then you can't just... Is this where I'd use the stack memory nodes or something, maybe? I am sure there is a way to save an instruction here, <laughs> but I'm not seeing it. Hmm. I see it. It's this instruction. I can have somebody else do this. Right? Um, and in fact, that means I can also delete this. So you know that you need to... Oh, but that... Okay. So I think that's what I need to do. So the correction, since I oversubtracted here can be done by you, I think. Uh, so that's where I would have done that. All right, so you wait for the finish. But I can't... No, that's fine. Move left down. Move ack down. Uh... There we go. That will do it. Um, so you never, right, because you can't subtract your back, um, you can't operate on both your registers at once. So just let this guy do it. Don't touch this register when you're shuffling that value around, and that should be okay. All right, so that lets me, um, okay, so you're going to be jump loop JLZ, um, uh, Sure, whatever, just zero. All right, and I even have room for one more instruction if I need it here. Okay, does that all work? No. Um, I subtracted something very wrong there. Ah, because you got the signal. So you would need to swap or something? Back left, jump loop, change, finish, swap. Yeah, you need to swap first, okay? Right? You take your time. Yes, it's still wrong. Hold on, this is R. You needed to, you're adding the wrong thing. What am I? So I'm not really stopping to think this through thoroughly. <laughs> um, but let's just see what happens when this does what it does. Back is three, so you're going to swap. Three is... Wait, move left down. Right, so that's the remainder. What were the commented outlines that I deleted? You had to read from it once more and add that. Oh, I, t I changed my add into a sub. There's my problem. Whoops. That was all it was, right? That's it. There we go. It's happy. It's not fast, but it works. Okay. Uh, it's not fast, but it's average. Nearly. I mean, I guess that's average. Uh, normal node count. Slightly higher instruction count than, than normal. Okay. I'm happy enough with that. <laughs> hey, look. Histogram viewer went really well. Let's go on to signal window filter. <laughs> I'm going to make this mistake again. 
Sequence indexer. <laughs> Here we go. The structures of the past persist and become memory. That memory, dverm 50q, the present again, something, 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 discovered something new, lie covering what was lost. Recovering what was lost soon now. Okay. Uh, sequences are zero terminated. Read a sequence from in.v. Read index values from in.x. Look up index value and write index value to out. Okay. So stack memory node will for sure be useful here. Oh, I got to remember them. Okay. So here's another case where I want to store something in here, pull it all out, put it in here for storage, operate on it in the in the middle, pull it all out and put it back in here for storage. So I almost certainly want to pretty much copy, uh, it was this one, pretty much copy this, right? Um, I hope I remember how all that worked um, because I want to do the same type of thing. So what are the uh, relevant ones? So you get a number of times to do that. You send a signal first to indicate that you're ready. Yeah, so the V, right, so these three will be very, very similar to the, um, the signal window three and the L shape that are around the stack memory node there. Gonna start with that copy paste because that's a lot of work I don't have to necessarily do here. And this should, I, I hope I am able to pick this apart and understand like what I need to change in it. Okay, so, um, but hang on. <laughs> I hyper focused on one very small part of the problem without looking at the overall picture. So, Zero terminated, so that's how I know when I'm done packing that into the stack memory node. But then, you need to pull out, okay, you need some different logic in here to know which one to pull out. All right, so you need to read this, stick it into the stack memory node until you hit a zero, and then signal to this that... Um, well now hang on so how did how did the signaling work for this I'm not certain it's a good idea to okay so yeah just move right up move up right move, move down nil right so just just wait for anything to come back from there I gotcha Um, there is no initialization in the sense of what a uh, signal window filter wanted. Um, but I need to... Why do you need your permission to do your work? I'm not sure it does yet. So let's not worry about that just yet. Uh, move left to ACK, right, so this needs to communicate the number of, uh, how many of those it pulled out of there, right? I'm going to use JNZ. This isn't right. No, it is right. Um, no, wait. It is. Um, what I actually want is this. I think. All right. So at the end of the sequence, um, 
I want to signal this way, right? Uh, okay, right, so I do need a loop. So read a value. If it's zero, then send a signal down here. And yes, I do need to wait for a signal from you for my permission to continue, because I need to know that downstream, everything has finished its job before uh, starting this process again. This first one is semi-unnecessary. First one's unnecessary, so, so don't do the first one. There. Um, so I'll save like three instructions as this uh, moves there. Okay, so move up, right, move right up. So first signal comes from here. So yeah, this first populates that. This is waiting for this. Oh, but um, I need to move something different down. I need to move, right. Need to swap, move ACK down, uh, move down nil. Um. Yeah, so I need to reset my back buffer. Okay, so this should move a value. Uh, right, so read a value, move the value if it's not zero, add one to back, and then continue doing that until you hit a zero, at which point you um, move the back buffer down here and reset it and then listen for a signal from this to resume your work. Yes, okay, so this program appears to be done, uh, This the program in this node appears to be done. You just shuffle values like that forever. Ferry them back and forth in alternating order. You receive a count of how many things go on the stack. Uh, Oh boy, this core is going to be doing way too much stuff. I think that's okay though. You can like maybe report each value in turn to this core and like, yeah. This one can just read each value as it comes from here. Yeah, right. So, um, all right, so I have a plan. Uh, anyway, so you wait for a number, uh, a count of how many are in here. Ooh, problem. This happens once. This happens many times for that same sequence. So for one thing, I don't need this signaling at all. You're just gonna like, in fact, you don't need to even reset anything. Um, all you want to do is report that count. You're going to have to save it forever. Oh, I see. Here, I, I don't want to label, so I'm just going to... Um, what is it? J, j, j row negative one. Do that forever. Um, there. Uh, actually, no, and you never even do this, so you can just do that. Okay. So yeah, this will report uh, the count as many times as it wants to. This will continue asking for it. Okay, so you are going to need to listen for a signal from... The, uh, no, wait. What? Move up, right. Okay, so you get the number. No, this is fine. You get the number. Uh, great, so you have the number. Um, store it in back. Read a value. Move it down and move it right. Uh, sub one from back. What? Oh yeah, this was when I was pulling um, a certain number out of there. That's right. Right. 
Right. Okay, so it was convenient that I happened to use the five as my signal there, so I didn't have to, like, count to five here, because this is actually a variable count this time. <laughs> so it just happened that the way I wrote that previous program works extremely well for this. But this part is hard-coded. This knows it has five values, but it doesn't really know about this. It lets this one tell it about it. But down here, um, that's fine, though, because I can just do that. Read this again, because this will keep sending that forever. Great. Um, I don't need this. I definitely want to keep all the values. Loop 2, move down up. Sub 1, jigs loop 2. Okay. Sure. Let's assume that's fine. So this will just report everything that goes in the stack forever. But how do you know what value, what index is which? At the moment, you don't really. I don't think I've accomplished much yet. I mean, I've, I've accomplished saving this for reuse. Okay, so that's, that's not nothing. All right, so you're the index. So you're going to need to understand an index. Using that index is going to be easy enough. Oh, that's fine, actually. Kind of. Um, there might be some signaling between these two. That's okay, though. Um, uh, no, it's not. Mm, okay. Um, my mind's getting ahead of itself a little bit. I do Doubt I can fit the rest of this program in here, but I'll try. Okay, so what do you need to do specifically? You have a you have an index in your register. You need to read from this. Discarding values while that index is greater than zero. Um, this structure might not make sense, but I just want to get the logic down. Um, actually, this works just fine. Okay, so I, the instruction space is going to be at a premium here, so I won't be able to get away with that um, forever. But for now, I'm going to leave it because it's more readable than a shorter label. So, um, you know what I could do, though? Uh, I could do J row, but again, that'll be less readable. I'm doing this for readability. I can compact it later. Okay, so... Um, so if I'm not discarding, if this is zero, then I want to move left down. Oh, okay. So that's actually... I would say this is most of the logic you need. This will get you one value successfully, then this will block an output or your index will get offset or something, something. Because this just in a loop forever just loops through this, loops through this, loops through this, loops through this. You need to remember, you need to learn and remember what the count is. So I need an initial value here. Yeah. There's some inefficiency because I'll be reporting like the number of things that went in here multiple. It, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, okay. So I'm just going to pass on the, the value count over to here. So you will know how many it takes. However, where am I going to store that? I guess in the right. Sure. All right. So you will know... Um, if you only need the value once I can get away with this, uh, that's probably not going to be the case. Um, do I know how many times you're going to need to read it? Okay, this is getting more complicated. Um, 
and again, I don't have a full picture of what I'm doing here, just kind of following my nose. Um, so anyway, the thing that's wrong with this program is it doesn't discard the remaining values after reading the index. Oh dear, how are you going to know how to do that though? Yeah, that's the hard part here. Uh, everything else is fine, uh, but that's the hard part of like, at least of adapting the prior program that I wrote to, for this purpose. So you store the count here. You have the count, great. Um, you have the index. You're not using your back buffer yet. Uh, maybe I could use back instead of this, but I'll worry about that momentarily. So anyway, do this the number of times that... Uh, I think I know what I'm probably gonna wanna do with this, but let's, let's just walk through this for a moment. Let's not use the first number as an example. Let's say five. That's right in the middle. So you'll have to read and discard some, then read and use one, then read and discard some. So I'll think of all three phases that way. So you have a five. Uh, it is greater than zero, so you will discard. Uh, discard the zeroth value by moving left into nil. Mm -hmm. Subtract one from your index, that is fine. I think I know what to do here. Well, hang on, don't get ahead of yourself. So right, subtract one from index. You now have four. You jump back here. Four is still greater than zero, so you... Okay, so you discarded for five, four, three, two, one. And now you have zero. So you go to this instruction and move left to the down. Um, now you need to empty the remaining everythings. So right, I have two line inefficiencies. Those aren't instructions, but I might have to compact them at some point. Anyway, so when I am emptying the remaining whatevers, I think what I need to do is tell you every time I've subtracted one and have you subtract from your own thingy. And then... Okay. Um... Something like that. Um, so if it's not less than zero, okay, sure, let's do something distinctive, why not? Um, then you want to report it. Do you want to report it? Yes, you do. Okay, I think I understand this. Um, Something like that. Um, so yeah, once you're down here, you want to basically just continue discarding. Um, yeah, this is fine. You're done with your index. So I'm going to... I almost can get away with that. Um, so what I actually want to do is J row, no, false. I don't want to unconditionally jump. All right. Um, all right, so I'm gonna have to start abbreviating, which is annoying. Empty loses its Y. Um, move right, ack, left, nil. Um, Uh, 
uh, wait, hold on. No, this is this is this is right. Um, these abbreviations are getting real ugly. All right, so does this make sense at this point? This might be complete. So what I'm doing is I find the indexed value. Okay, so first I move the the count of this over to here. I find the indexed value once I have arrived at empt. I read the thing that you've been trying to write to me. Don't I need to signal here? Yeah, I need to signal here. Yeah. Okay, so I send a signal to tell you that um, I'm no longer subtracting things. So I've found my index. Therefore, you should report to me how many are left in the count beyond that index. Um, you're going to look over this program in a moment. I'll read that remaining number, and then that many times discard the value this wants to write, and then count down until I reach zero, at which time I loop back around to here and proceed. Sounds about right. Okay, so you want to read the count value, stick it in here, read a signal. If it's less than zero, this one, then you want to, okay, so there is definitely a bug here. Um, I need to jump to a loop. Uh, something like that. Um, okay, so you read a signal. If it's less than zero, then you want to subtract from your back value. And then continue doing that until it is not less than zero. So make the back available. What? Why do you do this? Yes, that's right. Uh, make the back available, then move it move your register over here, and then start over. Sure, sounds right. Okay, okay, sounds right to me. It's already wrong, it's six, seven, seven, ninety-four. This might be backward. Mm, now it's just stuck forever. Okay, this program's not working at all. <laughs> oh boy, and this is going to be a bear to debug. Yeah, so for one thing, since this is a LIFO, this is going to go backwards. So I need to either, um, like, negate the index, which would be possible, I think. Or, um get it on the return trip from here instead of the, the initial trip to save it, which probably makes more sense. So zero being 697 totally makes sense, but why does it get stuck? So hang on, let's, let's solve one thing at a time. Let me re reverse this first, since I think that's going to be easy. Um, yeah, so you want to simply... Change this to move up, down. And this changes to move down, ack. All right. Oh, no, you need something in your accumulator, I see. That's fine, I can swap. Oh dear, hold on, please undo. Let's think, think this through. Okay, so 
Um, move left, act, move act, right. Why do you swap? Okay, so loop has swap. Okay, so loop is going to be. Now I want to. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste that. Um, ignore this node, it won't do anything. This is just my reference for how this used to look while I do surgery on it. So I want to move up, down. And then, well actually, really what I want to do is change that to that and change this to this. And just cut that here and put this there. I doubt that's right, it doesn't look right to me. All right, so get the count. Shuffle the count over. Um, also, this is backward. Empty this down here for count times. Uh, yes. Read the count again because you lost the value because you did this. Swap so you save your count. Read a value in the reverse order from here, or in the forward order really, since that was the reverse order. Uh, put it in the appropriate place. Um, do this, this first, just so this can get there one instruction earlier. Uh, yes, this seems correct. Okay. So first of all, that should go in the forward order and get the first value correctly. Okay, it did it. And it seemed to get the second value correctly. It didn't. 945. Do I have some sort of off by one? Probably. But now you're just doing this forever, and that might be because of the off by one? Hold on, zero, okay. So, can, how, how can I tell when this goes wrong? Well, when it uh, outputs its second value. So you're looking for index five. You're currently at Okay, yeah, so you're working working your way down there. I mean, this worked for one, and mostly worked for another. I think I just have an off by one here. It's reading the um, sixth value instead of the fifth or something. Hang on, you're sitting there. Right, you're done discarding. Did you, like miss your chance to... Something looked very wrong about that. I mean, it is wrong. It's giving the wrong output. So I know something is wrong. Here, let me... Um, I want... Um, I want you to complete one loop and then breakpoint me. But how can I do that? Let me just watch how you execute. So right, you're emptying, and then you do that. Okay, so there's no good place to breakpoint. I'm just gonna have to catch it live. All right, so you're emptying. I'll watch, watch that. So you've ref refilled this. Move left nil. You're doing an extra one of those. That's my off by one. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So you'll get off by more and more. Okay, so I'm doing an extra discard. I'm discarding one time too many. Move left nil, sub one. Jump loop, what? Wait, so you're doing an extra discard. How is that? Y 
You definitely did that one time too many, but why? Okay. Ten must be the count of this. Oh, hold on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. Not greater than zero. So right, and add index zero, you do this. Mm -hmm. Move left down. So wait until you have received your value, which will take a bit. It'll happen right about now-ish. Okay. So 860 makes it out. Then, yeah, I just need to sub one here. Okay, got it, it makes sense. Um, okay, so just sub one. Great, that'll, that'll, everything will be fine. Um, yes, 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 okay. Because when I read the actual index, I didn't send a signal over here to um, to discard that one. But I know I will always read one index, so you can just assume that you're sending at most one fewer than the the count. It's something like that. Anyway, this works. I d oh, what? Mm, so I have an error when you get a nine. Wow, that's a late time to be doing that. All right. Well, that's going to make this a pain to debug. All right. So, oh boy. Um, <laughs> are there any, like, conditional breakpoints or anything here? Probably not. No, it's just per line. Okay. So I can't, like, watch for when I get the value of 9. Okay, so, advanced debugging. I'm going to not do advanced debugging. I'm just going to do this the dumb way. So here's a 9. Somewhere was a 9. There's a 9, waiting to go there. All right. I can't modify this right now to insert a breakpoint. A breakpoint's just going to be either there or not. So I'll just have to step for a bit. So that's emptied. Okay. So what happens when you get a 9? Report the 10 as always. Move up. Back. Okay. So you have a 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, so it's the last one. I'm guessing this happens at least once or something. Yeah, I think I know what's going on. All right, but let's watch and see if I can catch it happening. Anyway, so that's going to shuffle those over, then shuffle them back. Okay, so you discarded your first value. Subtracted one, told this to subtract one. All right, so back should go down to eight. Then you wait again, back goes down to 7, down to 6, 5, 4, 3. All right, so... You have not discarded, so you're moving the real thing now. That one gets through just fine, right? 697, 697, that's what it's supposed to be, yes. Okay, so now you want to empty. Send that signal over to the right. Yeah, there's my problem. There is my problem. I need another... I need to jump over this if the value I get is zero. Ooh. This is a tight space to be doing stuff like that. Okay, so here's a line I can free up, sure. All 
All right, so I see the problem. You're doing this anyway, even if you already get a zero. Uh, okay, I think I know how to fix that. Discard turns into disk. Um, ST for start. Sure, little bit of a hack, but just check for a zero initially and short circuit this. Not really a hack. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> can you call anything a hack in this language? <laughs> Either everything or nothing is. Anyway, that fixes the bug. Uh, just had to do an initial zero check uh, instead of going ahead and doing my work. Boy, my, instru my cycle count's not great. Instruction count's not great. <laughs> Node count is not the worst, but could be better. <laughs> All right. Um, so I think a large part of this, the reason for this is because I immediately keyed into the idea that I wanted to do something similar to this which itself was already inefficient, as I saw by the performance statistics of this function. Um, so I basically carried that inefficiency forward into here, and had already locked myself into the way of thinking that uses this pattern. Uh, so empty it, refill it, empty it, refill it. Um, and there's a lot of complexity in here. Off the top of my head immediately, uh, I don't know what I would do differently, but again, I started with this way of thinking, like this This was the, the, the entire basis for the whole program. I think I would need to like think outside this box to understand how to do this faster, and um, that's just not where my brain is right at the moment. Okay, great. So I didn't one more level quite as hard as yesterday, uh, uh, last time I played this, <laughs> but it was an extremely similar pattern. All right, next up, sequence sorter. I hear this one's hard. Or storage image decoder. I'm um, probably going to do this one. Also, this is the button that has opened up now. I won't click that now, but I'll click it next time and see what it is. Sounds cool. All right, I'll see you next time for those things. I'm almost done with this, and that makes me kind of sad. But this sounds like it might be, like, since there's an editor... You know what? Let's check it now. Is this, like, user-created puzzles? I'll bet those will be, like, insane. <laughs> In a game like this, they usually would be. There is an incredible amount of restraint in the, um... Oh. Yeah, okay, now hang on. No, this is just like another set of puzzles. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I'll check it when it's time to check it. But yeah, seems like there are definitely more puzzles there. I'm not sure what this means yet, but uh, yeah, I'll explore it after I've dealt with those. All right, so next time, Secret Sorter. I'll see you then.